What's up YouTube, it's Mythbro, and today I'm going to be going through my Pantheon guide for the Egyptians, and we will be taking an in-depth look at everything on the tech tree for all three of the gods. We'll go through all the god powers, the minor gods, the unique techs, and see everything that you might expect when you queue up with the Egyptians. Now, let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite Egyptian god to play? For me, I think it's Isis, but I saw a lot of players playing set throughout the beta. But with that, let's get started and we will begin with Ra. Now, Ra is the god of the sun, as you can see here on the portrait, and it has a focus on the Migdal Stronghold units. That's gonna be that uh, keep or castle you might think of from other, other Age of Empires games that you get in the Third Age. And with Ra, uh, you have the ability for your priests to empower. Now, we always have pharaohs able to empower with the Egyptians, but with Ra, their priests can also empower, which gives 75% strength of pharaohs for the resource drop-off and 50% for all other aspects. So basically, priest becomes pharaoh light, right? You can have those. You also have a bonus for camel riders, chariot archers, and war elephants. Again, that's why focus on the Migdal Stronghold. With that, you really want to get up to the third age, right? Because um, none of these units are available in the second age. The monuments cost 25% cheaper and have 20% more hit points. And not only that, but a pharaoh can empower a monument and then it empowers nearby buildings with 20 range. So basically, if this was the monument, your, your pharaoh is empowering this monument and it draws a circle around it. And that basically gives... Uh, area of effect empowerment so it's kind of like the cistern from aoe4 maybe a tp from aoe3 and that's super cool so Ra gonna be big on the migdal units big on empowering you got your uh priest can empower as well so a fun little sieve honestly Ra was my favorite sieve growing up as a kid i just loved playing them and i particularly loved uh getting the rock this tra bird tr uh transport in the third age but not to get ahead of myself let's start with the age one bonuses and god power so starting out in the beginning of the game, you have rain available as a god power. You target it anywhere and it makes villagers on the map gather from farms faster, but your villagers are gonna be even fastest. So what's that mean? A lot of times you wanna go for you know a farm-based economy. You don't need to worry so much as going out on the map to get all those hunts. Now, that's always a good thing to do. And for one reason, I kind of feel like Ra is a little bit uh, underpowered from the uh, the the original implementation because there's so much more food on the map. But with that, rain is going to be used to uh, help your farms. You slap those down, you're going to be farming better, getting the food you need to age up to the third age. You can get an upgrade. This is going to be Skin of the Rhino, which is a unique tech. It improves the armor of your laborers, making them more resilient to attacks. Going up to the classical age, you have two options. Your first option is going to be Bast, which is the goddess of protection and cats. Who doesn't love a good cat god? Uh, her improvements age your laborers. Uh, or you can go up with Ta, and with Ta, it's going to be the god of innovation with uh, improvements benefiting your technology. Let's go through what you have with Bast. So with Bast, you get access to the god power Eclipse. With Eclipse, you target anywhere on the map and it turns it into nighttime and it improves the abilities of your myth units, increasing the rate at which your monuments generate favor. Now, this is pretty much kind of a lot of times a combo uh, god power. You, know, you don't oftentimes actually use this uh, early on or in the second age. You can if you've made a ton of myth units, but a lot of times it's paired Later on, uh, maybe go with the god power where you're going to be spawning out uh, some myth units. You're going to use your age three myth units. Uh, and Ra kind of has some of those later uh, god powers. That doesn't really give you like the army of the dead is like what I really think about when I play Isis, what I like to combo this with. You have access to the Sphinx as the myth unit of choice, and it does a sand vortex that does area attack as its special ability. And if you get all the upgrades for that, it makes your Sphinx is really, really, really good. It increases their speed and attack, uh, and they can really become deadly, especially you add three or four of them and they group area attack. You know, that's going to add up and be very nice in a battle. Not to mention if you pop Eclipse with that. Upgrade wise, you've got Sacred Cats. Ba Bass Cats protect granaries from vermin, which will improve all uh, all food gathering rates. So this does include your farm, your huntable, your herdable, and the berry bush. I think originally, uh, early on, I thought Sacred Cats like only applied to farms for some reason, but it, yeah, it does affect all of the food gather rates. 
And then you have the Ads of Wepoet. I probably said that wrong. Uh, which Bass lends laborers uh, the Ads of Wepoet, allowing them to fell trees and gather wood faster. So if you're trying to get a bunch of farms, of course, being able to improve your, your wood gathering is going to be nice to have uh, with the Bass. Now, if you try to go up with, you want to go up with Ta, let's talk about what Ta has available. So with Ta, you've got access to Shifting Sands, which is super cool. And I especially like this God Power in Retold. The reason being, Shifting Sands basically is a teleport. You, you use it, you know, it's units here, and then you say, hey, across the map, I have line of sight, I want them to shift there. It's amazing for timing attacks, particularly in the third or fourth age. You get a bunch of siege towers up and you shift them onto the enemy TC, really quickly take them out. It could be used for some amazing surprise attacks, but the even more surprising thing about Shifting Sands is in Retold, you can reuse it, right? You could recast it. All the god powers, you can recast. They cost favor and it isn't cheap, so you won't want a bunch of monuments down, but you know, they, you might surprise them with the first one, but they'll never expect the second uh, Shifting Sands. You can also use it to retreat. Maybe villagers get attacked and you want to boom, shift them back to your main TC. A lot of possibilities you can do with Shifting Sands. Now, the god power that's going to be available is going to be Wadjet, or the uh, myth unit, rather. And uh, Wadjet is going to be a magical cobra that can spit venom and is good against human soldiers. So at, at range, it, it's, a, it's a range unit, shoots venom, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Now, looking at the techs that are available here, you've got the Scalloped Axe, which is going to be for your Axemen, the Leather Frame, which is going to be for your Spearmen, uh, Electrum Bullets, which is going to be for your Slinger, and then Shadow, which this is a really cool tech, uh, reduces the cost of farms and causes laborers to build them faster. See the theme, right? You're going for farming. This is going to make them cheaper. So if you're on a map with not a, a ton of hunts, uh, maybe like Oasis, it'd be really nice to go up with Ta. You shut off, get your farmings in early on, use that rain. They can really combo nicely. And we'll talk about all of the unique uh, Egyptian uh, infantry units when we scroll over on the tech tree. Let's continue on to the Heroic Age. Now, with the Heroic Age, you have access to either Sobek or uh, Sekhmet. With Sobek, it's going to be the god of kingship and defense. His improvements benefit uh, buildings and your mercenaries, which is a unique thing that the Egyptians have access to. The god power you're going to have available with Sobek is going to be Locust Swarm, which is a little bit different than in the original. Uh, it summons a plague of uh, locusts to attack nearby villagers, farms, fishing ship, and livestock. It isn't quite as good as eradicating villagers or even farms for that matter. And before locusts used to kind of like swarm in a blob and it was very concentrated and it was like would really kill what was there. Now locusts is kind of like a, a creeping barrage. So you're going to like set it here and it's going to go, you know, in like one direction. And so if you're retreating with a villager, like you might retreat the wrong way and that sucks. But if you, you recognize it quickly, you can actually sidestep the locusts and escape. So something to keep a, uh, keep an eye on. Now the rock is gonna you get two myth units with uh, with with Sobek, which is kind of unique. The rock is a flying transport, doesn't have an attack. It's a big bird, flies around, and it picks up your units, and you can transport them over walls, over seas, etc. But it got a major nerf and retold because in OG you could just like sky lift, beam me up, you go over the rock, and boom, instantly jump inside of them. There's now an animation with it. So when you try to get in the rock, he goes like, caw, 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 and slowly comes down the ground and then slowly back up, which makes him feel really clunky to use. I think they need to maybe speed it up or something, but I wasn't loving the rock here in Retold. Let me know what your thoughts were on this, because you used to kind of pair it with your uh, Petsuchos and just like, if they start to attack them, like boom, jump inside the rock, run away, go pop somewhere else, kind of like Medivac style, but maybe that's why they nerfed it. Speaking of which, the Pesuchos is going to be a bejeweled uh, crocodile that fires a focused ray of sunlight. Now, these were really, really good in Legacy. They are not so good in Retold, at least as of the beta build, which could certainly change before what we get access to at release. Shoots a laser beam, you add these up, self-explanatory, a nice backline unit to have. Would like to see them do a little more damage compared to some of the other myth units, but that's what they are. They're a cool unit. Now we have some upgrades for mercenaries. You got Medjay. It improves the lifespan of your mercenaries. Your mercenaries you train at your talent center, they only cost gold and they have a limited lifespan, right? So this makes it so that they last longer, okay? Uh, and then we also have, an, of course, an upgrade for our uh, myth unit. We'll keep going on. Upgrades the buildings. Sun-dried mud brick improves the hit points of buildings and lowers their cost and construction time. So 
your uh, your buildings have are going to have more HP and they're going to be building faster. One thing to think about, particularly with building upgrades in Age of Mythology, is if your opponent's going to use something like a tornado or a meteor or a vortex, whatever it ends up being, right? It could be really helpful to have those upgrades in and your buildings just might survive that next attack. And the last one for uh, Sobek is going to be the Solar Bark, which it makes it so Sobek occasionally summons sea snakes near enemy ships that your uh, cabinets are attacking. I didn't get a chance to use this, but it sounds like pretty self-explanatory. You got your archer ships. They might have a chance of uh, spawning sea snakes. I didn't see this in action. Let me know if you did and uh, if, if, if it was cool. Your other option for the heroic age is going to be segment. And honestly, uh, typically the option I was going with when I played Retold. Let me know which one you typically uh, were choosing. The god power you're going to have access to is Citadel. And you basically, you put it on your town center and boom, it turns into a mighty defensive Citadel. For if you go for a fast heroic and you're under attack, slap that down. You know, you've got Citadel, which is very nice. But not only can you use this on your own TC, you can use it on an ally as well. Maybe they're in trouble. Give them a Citadel and it's going to recharge. Maybe, boom, I want a frontline Citadel. You get a Citadel. You get a Citadel. You get the point. Citadel on your town center. Cool god power. You have access to the Scarab, which is a myth unit that is a siege unit. And the thing I like about this is typically your siege is very wood and gold intensive where the scarab is going to be food. Typically, you know, you've done a farm transition, whatever, food's easier to get uh, in the kind of that middle stage of the game and where you're spending your wood and gold maybe on upgrades and your Migdal units and all that stuff, the scarab can be quite nice for an alternative siege uh, unit, but of course you got to get in range and those heroes will hard counter them. So depending on who you're playing against, they might have a lot of tools to take down your siege with the scarab. For upgrades, you got access to Bone Bow. Segment equips Chariot Archers with the Desert Bone Bows, improving their attack. So this is for your Chariot Archers. you got Slings of the Sun, and this is going to be so that your Slingers do bonus damage, uh, uh, to do extra damage to infantry. So that's not just Archers, it's infantry across the board. So it could make your Slingers uh, quite good if you've made a lot of those, the Counter Archers that you kind of have. You've got an upgrade for your uh, for your beetle, the scarab, uh, which causes them to regenerate while attacking enemy units. So kind of like a life steal, which that's cool to have. And then you've got Force of the West Wind, which is a siege upgrade. It enables you to construct catapults at an early age. Typically, you can't get them to the fourth age. So you can get them in the third age. And her breath imbues your scarabs and siege weapons with the destructive power of the desert wind. So they get a plus 20% uh, damage boost. So really going to be a, you know, a defensive heavy and a siege heavy god if you decide to go this route. Now let's take a look at the mythic age. And this is where things really get fun for the Egyptians. And man, it's hard to choose. I really struggle choosing. So let me know which one you like to choose the most. For me, it's like you can get a son of Osiris or you get the tornado. How do you, how do you possibly choose? Now, the fun thing about Son of Osiris is uh, you use this on your pharaoh and boom, he turns into this lightning wielding bird of chaos and death. He shoots out this chain reaction lightning bolt. Super fun myth unit. Maybe one of the best, uh, most fun god powers in the game to use. But in Retold, you can get multiple Sons of Osiris. Now, you got to save a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, favor up for this. I did it in a team game. I was very uh, specifically like not getting myth units, not spending my favor because I knew I was going to go into double Son of Osiris. And uh, yeah, just super fun. You have access to the mummy myth unit, which is an undead pharaoh that can curse an enemy unit and convert them into a minion. Okay, so basically going to turn an enemy unit into a minion. I believe it also works on myth units, which is pretty huge. You can have an expensive myth unit and boom, turn them into a minion. Pretty amazing. You've got upgrades for your camels. Uh, Desert Wind is going to place the Desert Wind at your camel rider's backs, increasing their spirit, speed, attack, and hit point. So if you want a camel heavy army, maybe your enemy's got a lot of archers, or you want to go raiding with them, it could be a nice option to have. And then you've got some pharaoh upgrades. New Kingdom makes it so that you can have two pharaohs instead of one. So double the pharaohs, double the empowering, double the fun, double the son of Osiris. And then lastly, you've got the Etef Crown, um, which Osiris upgrades mummies to mummy viziers, which have improved hit points and attack and grants their minions a longer 
lifespan. So it's going to be an upgrade for your mummies. So you like mummies and uh, lightning shooting birds. Uh, this is going to be the option for you, Osiris. Now, your last option for age up for Ra is going to be Horus. And Horus is the god of vengeance. His uh, improvements benefit your infantry. The god power you get, Tornado. Don't have to explain that much, right? You cast this on the enemies. Boom. They're going to be flying up into the sky. You can use it on their base to take out a towns there. Stop their age up from coming in. You can use it to suck up villagers on the gold mine. Maybe their army that's right outside your base. Be careful using it too close to your base. Tornado is going to be a nice god power you can use. And then you have access to the Avenger myth unit. And this guy is basically a spin the win. He does this uh, 360 no scope spin um, and that's his charge attack. Uh, and, and he costs food uh, to train and he attacks multiple units at once. Then you've got some upgrades, Axe of Vengeance, which is going to be an upgrade for your Axemen. So as they lose hit points, it makes them stronger against buildings, which is a very interesting uh, perk uh, in that way. But it only makes them stronger uh, against buildings for that, for missing hit points. And then you have the Spear of Horus, uh, which lends Spearmen his Weapon of Retribution. Uh, and this is going to be increasing their attack and allowing them to counter cavalry, uh, which is... Uh, a nice thing for your spearmen when you're looking at the mythic age and then lastly you've got the greatest of 50 and horus appoints military commanders increased infantry hit points and speed so it's going to be giving all of your infantry 30 percent hit points plus 10 percent speed and that's a nice thing to have certainly a nice thing to have so we looked at all of the gods to age up with we talked about all their techs let's take a look at the tech tree now we're going to scan this tech tree Starting with the town center, you've got, of course, the skin of the rhino we talked about at the beginning. It will spawn your pharaoh for free. As your pharaoh dies, your pharaoh, you'll get a new one eventually. Um, so that's how that works. Uh, you get a villager. You can train mercenaries, uh, which cost gold. It's kind of like a, could be the last ditch effort to protect when you don't have an army. Or can be used in the late game when you're at pop max, you've got tons of gold in the bank, and you just, boom, can spam out some mercenaries on the, front, on the enemy really quick. Uh, they can be very nice to have. Uh, you've got the priest, which is going to be your explorer, going to be used for picking up relics. Doesn't have a bunch of line of sight. It's your hero that's going to be good against myth units. You have to get an upgrade for them, of course. And uh, you can build obelisks out of the map for line of sight. Now, heading down to the uh, third age, or, or sorry, second age of the town center, you've got a building upgrade. You got the mason, so that's going to be HP of your buildings, right? Uh, but going in the third age, uh, Realize some of these texts are the unique ones with the minor gods, so you don't get all of these. Just keep that in mind. Uh, you get Mercenary Cavalry immediately unlocked in the Third Age, which is it's Mercenary, but on Cav. Very nice to have. Uh, you've got access to Architects, which can be even more uh, hit points for your buildings. And then you go down here, and you've got another upgrade for your Mercenaries, depending on if you go up uh, with uh, Sobek. Uh, an upgrade you don't want to forget about, it's going to be Fortified Town Centers. Fortified Town Centers is going to give attack and hit points and range your town center, but most importantly, going to give you some additional population. Okay, so if you get that pop max, you're, popped, you're, you're filled up with your army, it's time to get this. You want to get additional population on your town centers. Every Civ has this, and make sure you don't forget about it. Now when we go down to the Mythic Age, you've got some of these unique texts we talked about. You've got Secret of the Titans, you got to wonder. Nothing too special there uh, in the Mythic Age. Let's move on over to some of our economic buildings. So at the Lumber Camp, you've got your typical lumber upgrades, you get your typical gold gathering upgrades, typical farm upgrades, right? That's going to be the same with all the civilizations. And then you've got a few of your bonus texts, right? You can get the, the <laughs> ads of Wapawet if you go that route. You can get access to Sacred Cats if you go that route. And then they always like to call out hunting equipment. Uh, there's no hunting dogs in the second age in the age of mythology retold. You can get this in the third age to buff up your hunting. But not only that, it's kind of like your textiles or loom. It gives your villagers a hit point. So an important upgrade to have when you're getting raided. Now, moving on over to the water at the dock. Every sieve is going to have access to an arrow ship, a hammer ship, and a siege ship, right? And then there might be some uniqueness, unique text, maybe some unique ships etc so you've got your siege ship the war barge the arrow ship the cabinet and the uh the ramming galley which is gonna be your your hammer ship and then of course you've got your transport ship it's upgrade and then heroic fleet which is an upgrade that makes your ships just better at fighting myth units should there be myth units on the water i guess it would hurt myth units on land as well 
Looking at the third age, uh, depending on, I think this is depending on who you age up, you get the Leviathan. And I'm not actually entirely clear. Maybe you always get the Leviathan. Let's see, it's covered in, it's, it's got a myth unit upgrade, but I'm actually, I, I can't really remember. So if you do, let me know down below. It might be everyone gets a Leviathan, but I truly didn't test this and things have changed and retold. So not entirely sure. Uh, you've got the Crimson Linen, which is the upgrade for Siege. I guess it applies to the Leviathan. Uh, we already talked about that tech for the Solar Bark, if you should go that route. You got your upgrades. Now, in the fourth age, get the War Turtle. War Turtle, the Pokemon, right? This guy's out there. He's like the Kraken, but he's a turtle. Out in the water, turtle, turtle. Gonna be taking out ships. Really cool myth unit to have. Fishing boat and its upgrades. Move over to the house. Nothing too exciting there. Walls, you can get all the way up to a citadel wall. Now notice, uh, when I was covering the Greeks, they did not have these, okay? That's just uh, especially uh, something you get with the Egyptians. You can get some stronger walls, which is, can be quite nice. At your temple, of course, you're gonna have all of your myth units, all of their upgrades, and then the unique text that I covered uh, at the top of the video. So scroll back if you wanna go through all of those. At the tower, you can all you can get all the typical tower upgrades that you might expect, and then until the uh, Mythic Age, you can get your Ballista Tower, which is going to have a ton of attack and range, of course, and then you've got a Lighthouse, which everyone has access to, which gives this huge line of sight out on the battlefield. You see your array of monuments to choose through, so the monuments are how you uh, gain favor with Egyptians, and each monument gets a little bit more expensive. You might kind of see where they got the inspiration for the cistern in Age of Empires 4, okay? Now, the military offerings for the Egyptians uh, are unique, like they are for every Civ. Uh, you've got a barracks in the Second Age. You don't have a stable, you have no calf in the Second Age. And at your barracks, you've got a lot of counter infantry. So what does that mean? Spearmen counters cav, axemen counters other infantry, and slingers counter other archers. They're very kind of specialized in that manner, but if you're saying, well, what's my mainline infantry unit? Because like I've mentioned in past videos, counters are softer than hard sometimes in Age of Mythology. A Spearman, I would say, is going to be your good mainline unit to spam. The reason being, Mista tells me, they've got that speed. You've got mobility and speed with the Spearman. Uh, you can get some upgrades with them, of course. Uh, so, air on the side, if you're like choosing to make one of these, probably make the Spearman. But if you're playing like against Norse, you're going to want tons of Axemen, of course, against infantry or a lot of archers, the Slinger. Choose your adventure, but realize you don't have any calves. So if mobility starts to become a thing, you could get in some trouble. So you don't want to stay in the second age for too long with these guys. But at the same time, they might not expect you to attack. You've got all your upgrades with your slingers, all these unique upgrades we talked about with some of the gods uh, at the beginning of the game. But of course, uh, you can see them kind of uh, next to their unit that they represent. Moving on over, you've got your armory, and you've got the typical armory uh, text for your hack damage, your hack armor, and then your pierce armor, and then some additional unique text depending on which minor cod you choose to age up with. Uh, you do have access to the ballista uh, in the third age, which is going to be a ranged siege weapon. Uh, so that's, wait, is it in third age or the fourth age? I guess you do get it there. It's interesting. It's here. Is it actually an upgrade? Why do they show it? I feel like this is a mistake. I don't know why it's in the armory because you get this at the Migdal. I swear it was in the fourth age, but I might be thinking of the Norse. Uh, but either way, I'm fairly certain it is. But somebody correct me on that. I don't know why it's showing under the armory. You definitely don't train them at the armory. Uh, of course, you got fi firing fire projectiles in the the Mythic Age, etc. Moving on over, you've got caravans, your typical trade upgrades you would expect, uh, whether it's for caravan speed, uh, exchange rate at the market, etc. Here's our big doll. That's going to be our stronghold. And let's talk about the offerings. You've got the chariot archer, which is going to be a, a mounted archer on a chariot. Do you realize that counter calf will counter the chariot. He has a horse, has a horse. You've got your Camel Rider, which is a fast, expensive unit that is good against range, shoulders, and calves. So good against archers, good against other calves. Of course, there's some upgrades you can get along with that. And then you have the Elephant, you know, a big old beast, right? Strong, slow, and expensive uh, myth unit that's good against buildings and anything that gets in the way. Personally, I think if you want to really go the spamming uh, War Elephants route, you got to go play Isis because they have some of the best uh, late game techs. I'll be showing you that later uh, for the War Elephant. 
Um, you got heavy chariots, heavy camels, uh, heavy elephants, and then of course a unique tech if you do get bone bow, which will uh, impact your chariots. And then last but not least, there it is. Uh, I don't think you, okay, see, see, they're totally confusing me. You get access to the catapult in the fourth age of the Egyptians. They don't even get the, the ballista. I don't even know why it's in here. Uh, so they're doing a good job confusing Fitzbro and why I second guess everything is because if you played original and then played this, some stuff is just straight up different. So, uh, anyways, hope we've uh, cleared up that confusion. Uh, you have the siege tower and the catapult, uh, not to the mythic age, uh, with the Egyptians. And of course, there's upgrades for those, uh, which allows you to construct your catapults early if you get this upgrade. Um, and then your final your upgrade for engineers, that's going to help your siege weapons as well. Okay, we covered everything with Ra. Let's dig into Isis, and I will not be uh, re I will not re repeat the the gods that are the same. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so let's move on to Isis. And if you watch the video this far, I hope you take a second subscribe to the channel. Most of my viewers aren't actually subscribed. I've got a cast of games for AOM on the channel. I've got these guides. I stream on Twitch all the time. So I hope you do that. Help me out. Leave me a comment and thumbs up. I, I appreciate it. Let's dig in. To Isis. I'm not gonna lie, I typically do these videos with my my camera off and I totally just forgot. So I'm sitting here like my 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 light isn't on, my door is open, like what is this amateur hour? And you say, well, you know, fits, bro. You could have just edited this out. Well, that takes a lot of time and a lot of time of processing. And I have a baby right now, so I don't have time to do any of that. Here we go. Lights, camera, action. Let's get into Isis. Okay. So goddess of magic and healing for Isis, uh, the, her focus is on technology. Now, Isis monuments shield against enemy god powers, uh, 20 range, 40 when empowered. So I used to play Isis growing up and still do because I just got so sick of my opponent earthquaking and meteoring and tornadoing my main base. So I said, screw that. When I play Isis, I build my monuments in a circle around my town center. So when I have my farms in late game, I will be protected from those god powers. And it can be really frustrating to play against as well. So a fun reason to play Isis. Uh, empowered monuments heal nearby units for 20 range and generate favor 100% faster. I legit played this whole beta and didn't know that. I didn't take the time to read the tooltip. They could heal with that. I didn't even know. I, I don't think I ever favor. I, I rarely empower them. Of course, you only have one Pharaoh to empower. So a lot of times he's on the Mingo anyways. Upgrades are cheaper with Isis. Obelisks are cheaper. So make them everywhere. Scout the whole map with the Obelisks. They build 60% faster as well. And then your upgrades provide 30% 3% hit points to human soldiers. I mean, right there, the base Civ bonuses for Isis. Very strong. Those are some very cool things you can get. Let's look over to what she has for the uh, age one uh, god power and your upgrade. So right out of the gate, Isis has access to prosperity. This makes it so you target it anywhere on the map and it goes choo, 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 and then all of your villagers and trade caravans gather gold faster. I really like to use this as I'm aging up, I slap all my villagers on gold, I get pickaxe, and then I, is that the right thing, pickaxe? Yeah, pickaxe, and then I use this while empowering so I can get the most gold, can instantly get a second TC, slap down some military buildings, whatever it might be. So prosperity, could be nice, but you want a lot of villagers on gold when you use it. And then another nice upgrade to get Flood of the Nile. Uh, Isis ensures the, uh, whatever, it's a food trickle. It's a food trickle one uh it gives you one food trickle and the way you can do this is if you start the game immediately build a monument when you start aging up you can get this upgrade because you have all your builders on gold anyways you've got the favor and it's some food trickle which is very nice to have so do that get your flood of the nile okay in the second age you've got bast and you've got anubis now we already talked about bast so back it on up to Ra if you want to review that again but i won't for now here's anubis which is gonna be the god of judgment and the dead. His improvements help you send enemy units to the afterlife. I love the description. Personally, I feel like I, I pick Anubis a lot because you've got these antibites which you can run around and raid, uh, which is super fun to have, but you got micro it, of course. If you want more siege, you know, you're probably going to the Sphinx because they don't do a ton of siege. You don't have any other really siege options with Egyptians. Your god power is gonna be the Plague of Serpents, which is 
excellent to use when you're like in the middle of a fight or maybe even like you're getting i like to use them defensively i'm getting raided and it's like crap i don't have units i don't lose those villagers bring the snakes out and stop them in their tracks the snakes are going to attack what's nearby and they stay there they stay there on the map um enemy villagers by the way do counter these so keep that in mind now they do have to sit and micro and there's a lot of them to counter and it's kind of annoying uh but you can drop this on their town center as they're trying to put their second town center down or something like that a lot of ways you can use the serpents and if you got monuments you're gonna be able to cast this multiple times i've cast the snakes two three four times because i love snakes out on the map now upgrades you've got this serpent spear and i mentioned earlier spearman a nice mainline unit for the uh, egyptians if you want to this makes it even better it's going to give them venom and they're going to uh, inflict area damage over time so you're, you have much spearmen doing area damage extra venom it's going to be very nice to have and then lastly here you've got necropolis which increases the rate at which monuments generate favor so if you're looking to stack favor you're looking to get 10 son of osiris's you're gonna to want to play isis you're gonna to to get anubis and you're gonna get this upgrade it's gonna be very very nice now going into the heroic age you've got sobek which we already talked about but then let's take a look at uh neptis and with neptis you're going to have the god of the night and death her her improvements benefit pharaohs and your priests uh this is what i pick almost every time just because Priests are great units. You end up floating gold a lot with Egyptians, and you can just spam out some extra priests. It's going to be great for taking out myth units. Um, just nice to have. Um, so I like having these upgrades for the priests. Now you're going to have access to Ancestors, which brings up an army of the dead to fight for a short period of time. If you use it around water, there will be actually ghost boats that pop up. So even be that aware if it's on a map that doesn't technically have like water or rivers, but there's like a few small ponds, ghost boats will show up in those. So Keep that in mind with the ancestors, and a lot. And I like to pair this with. Uh, it pairs nicely with eclipse because it helps myth units, right? Eclipse is going to buff all your myth units. You bring in your whole army for a power attack, and then you you activate ancestors, or you go the other route. You activate ancestors of snakes at the same time. You know what I mean? Won't no 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 what happened. But the another big reason you pick this route the scorpion man the scorpion man he's got a stanger and boy oh boy it does a lot of damage it goes and then it does poison damage in this kind of like area of effect and it is super deadly make sure you got a few villagers on wood going up in this age so you can get some scorpion not too expensive 150 wood 22 favor and then we have some upgrades for your priests and pharaohs funeral rites nephis compensates you with gold when your warriors fall in combat so Make sure you get this early and not at the end of the game. Yes, it costs 100 gold, but you get five gold every time a unit dies, okay? So let's see, I'm no mathematician, but if we get out our, our calculator here, right? So if you've got your base cost is 100 gold, sorry, I'm not screen sharing, you divide it by five. If you lose 20 units, it pays for itself. I know it doesn't count for the favor. You're probably gonna lose more than 20 units. Get that tech. You got Spirit of, of Matt. Neptis increases the healing rate of pharaohs and priests and lowers the cost of priests. I like the cost savings alone for that. And you got Nepti. Uh, Neptis increases priest and pharaoh damage against myth units. So you got your enemy making a bunch of fire giants. You got him making a bunch of those pesky manticore. Another great reason to go here with Isis. Good luck catching them though. You got to make sure you get in position because they will outrun your priests. Let's keep in mind. And then you've got Funeral Barge. Neptis occasionally summons Leviathans to take place of War Barges that you lose in battle. That's pretty huge. You get just like a periodically summoned Leviathan. I haven't used this, but you think you win a battle and then suddenly a myth unit pops out on water. Gonna be super huge. Let's take a look at the Mythic Age. With the Mythic Age, you have access to Osiris and you have access to Toth. Now, we already talked about our Osiris with, with the previous, but I just want to highlight you can really stack up uh, favor with Isis, and then you can get multiple Sons of Osiris, so think about doing that. But oftentimes, this is the option I go with. I said, you know, if you want to go for elephants, go with Isis and get Toth. Here's the reason why, okay? Improvements benefit your laborers in war elephants. First off, you get a meteor strike. If you haven't already, I played my first game against Ozzy Drongo and I bombed the 
out of his base with Meteor Strike. He didn't, he didn't even know what happened. I sent him back to AoE 4. We meteor his base so hard. Uh, meteor Strike just a super fun uh, god power. Make sure you like target it on the building you're trying to hit because it will like put that first Meteor right there. You can take out a Town Center. If you hit the fourth age before them, you can maybe kill their Town Center that's trying to age up and that can be massive. You get access to the Phoenix, which in my opinion is the most beautiful myth unit in the game. It is so amazing. I love this unit. I haven't decided how much I like how it fights because I feel like by this point in the game, there's so much range or so much heroes that they often get picked off. So I like to use my Phoenix a lot of times, either defending or on the outskirts of the base is raiding. Feels like the best way to use them, but I'm still figuring it out. And then if they die, they can rehatch from an egg, which is super cool with Phoenix. Now here's the upgrade you've all been waiting for. Valley of the Kings. Not the just secrets that causes barracks and Migdal strongholds to spawn additional units when empowered. So what does this mean? When you get this age, you need to put your Pharaoh onto the Migdal. You want to get this upgrade. It is very, very expensive. 500 gold, 40 favor. And then when you train, there's a chance you're making one elephant and boom, you get two elephants for the choice of one price of one so you're going to do this and you'll see that chance happens and you're going to get double trained units and that is huge you can spam out an elephant army and then get the elephant text uh secrets allows your laborers to gather food wood gold faster basically it makes your whole economy better get this tech tusk of apodemac now unfortunately it gets cut off at the bottom of the screen but what this is going to do is it makes war elephants stronger cheaper and reduces their population costs so all that pairs well with getting double elephants so definitely get that i'm gonna move over here so that uh, i don't block anything with my chat as much as you love looking at me and i didn't want to have my camera on we went through all the techs all the gods uh let's talk about uh, what stands out on their tech tree. I won't repeat stuff that we did earlier in the video So go back and check out Ra if you want the more in-depth look at all these Now uh, in the first age you got your typical roster your priest pharaoh villager building upgrades for your town center some of the unique techs uh, You of course can in the mythic age get book of thought if you go that route Don't forget about that to get all of your uh, villager upgrades you got your typical roster of uh, gold, wood, and food upgrades. Really only this unique one we talked about earlier, which is Sacred Cats. Um, fishing going to be the exact same thing as far as your fishing upgrades go. Uh, looking at the dock, you can get the Leviathan in the third age, same as Ra. You get the turtle. It, this is exactly the same office offerings as you see with Ra. Uh, you get access to the Citadel wall with your wall, so same thing as Ra there. Uh, at your temple, you're going to have a few unique texts as you go through the ages. Of course, go refer back to the minor gods on what all those texts are going to be. Uh, you get access to all of your typical tower upgrades, your monuments. Remember, your monuments protect you from god power, so very good with these guys. Uh, at your barracks, you've got your spearman, your axeman, and your slinger. Uh, same as usual for all the Egyptian civilizations. No really big uh, unique text for them there other than over in the armory, you've got the serpent spear. Uh, if you, Depending on who you age up with, right? So we talked about that. Um, moving on, you've got your Migdal upgrades. You see all those unique ones depending on what you decide to go with. I recommend going Tots, get that Valley of the Kings. Make sure you're supervising uh, empowering that Migdal. And then you've got your Siege Workshop. So that's going to be it for Isis. Isis main, sound off in the chat. Let me know if this is what you're playing. But I know where the rest of you've been. You've been dirty set lamers because the only thing I could find out on the ladder was set during the beta. Oh boy, oh boy. Let's go check out the God of Storms and Trickery. So, Set has a focus on the barracks units. Pharaohs can summon animals of Set, so you can train for the cost of favor, you can train some animals of Set, and uh, your priests can convert wild animals, but when they get converted, they lose 25% food. Why is this so huge? Sure, you can go attack with those animals, but also, you can use this to convert a rhino in the middle of the map, Bring it back to your base, and now you can eat it under your town center. Not only that, maybe you stole it from your opponent's next hunt. So you can kind of nab food. It's kind of the professional scouts of Age of Mythology. Um, not only that, every time you hit the next age, you get a offering of 
uh, different animals per each age. So you can eat those or you can use them to go in for a full attack, right? Definitely options. You can shifting sands them into the enemy's base. Talked about barracks units, uh, fibers and spearmen, axemen and slinger speed. They get extra. That's just a nice little perk. Um, and their barracks siege work and Migdal stronghold costs less gold. So their buildings cost less, the units are more. And not only that, you want to build your barracks in the range of a a monument and the reason being monuments reduce the cost of units in nearby barracks and migdols by five percent you might have seen this like it looks like a red swarm of flies uh all that is is that's a discount for units so you get discounted barracks and strongholds you get uh stronger infantry uh units and then you also get additional discounts make sure you build your monument next to where you plan on building those okay let's look at the minor gods available Right at the beginning of the game, you get a god power, vision. It just is like, a, it's like a zone where it gives you a big, like, uh, just a circle of vision. That's basically it for like a temporary little scan. So you can see what the enemy's up to, um, and that's cool. Clairvoyance is an upgrade you can get, makes additional charges of the vision god power uh, be cast with no favor cost and can be granted more quickly. So this is, of course, going to be a cooldown, but if you get this upgrade, and I forgot to really get this when I played set. You can multiple times, you know, get a little a map hack, sneak peek into your opponent's base with vision. Uh, mind, of course, the vision cooldown. Now, as far as the gods go, uh, we have already talked about the rest of them, right? So we've got Anubis and Ta that we talked about earlier, Nethys and Sekhmet, which we talked about earlier, as long as well as Toth and Horus. But the nice thing is you can go back between all these and... You know, mix and match which one is your favorite, which Civ has the Civ perks that maybe work better with those minor gods. And then if we look and scan the uh, tech tree, it's pretty much all going to be exactly the same as the rest of the Egyptian pantheon. So with that, guys, that's going to be the entire Egyptian pantheon tech tree. Of course, any of this could change between now and release. I expect that it probably will. But hopefully it gives you an idea what all of these myth units, the god powers, the minor gods, are as you get into it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you listened this far, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you liked down below. I greatly appreciate that. Be on the lookout. I already have my Greek Pantheon tech tree guide up and I will be doing the Norse next as well. And well, Atlanteans, we're gonna have to wait until I guess launch because we don't have access to the Atlanteans for right now. Oh, can you, wait, oh, oh, I can, I can actually click and read about them. So I couldn't play them, but I can read about them. Okay, so I guess we can do Atlanteans later too. There we go. I learned literally as we're doing this. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you subscribe to the channel. And the hope to see you in the next one for my Norse guide.